It's Max Griffin. Happy to be joined by him. He's going to be fighting Michael Chiesa, UFC 310, December 7th. It is right around the corner, actually next Saturday. Max, how you doing, man? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing great. I like the robe, by the way. This uh, this is looking good. Is this your normal uh, morning attire? Yeah, I hopped in the cold plunge, so I'm a little, a little chilly, so... Forgive me for my luxury, but no, no, don't do it. Feeling good, man. I think you look good, man. You look like Hugh Hefner. It looks, uh, looks great here. So you you were telling me, do you, now do you cold plunge every day or is that just something you do when you're training? Every day. I have a mod tub cold plunge. I get in, I get in every morning before, well, it depends on my day, Mm -hmm. but I always get in at night after training. I just don't like to be like, cause I mean, I have early workouts. So if I have like a 7 a.m. workout, I'm not going to get in the cold plunge before. Mm-hmm. I don't like being tight and cold. Yeah. But I definitely get in midday and then at night. Yeah. No, it's smart. And uh, yeah, I, I do it after I work out. So I'll go shower and then I'll go in the cold plunge after and it it works great. Because your body's supposed to naturally heat up is my understanding. Yeah, yeah. It, hel- it helps for fat. It helps for for energy. I mean, it even helps for body stress. I have a whoop that I wear. And I'll be like, three is like high stress. I'm usually like in the ones, yeah. 1. 1.2 or something. But after the cold plunge, it drops on a whole point. It's like 0. 0.2, 0. 0.1. So it, it physiologically reduces stress in your body, which could make your body, which will make your body operate better, make you be calmer. Yeah. Um, so many benefits. That's great. Hey, if there's any cold plunge uh, companies out there want to sponsor us, we just did all the work for you. So uh, please reach out. I want my 10%. Um, but anyways, let, let's talk about uh, this fight, man. You got to be pretty excited. You know, I talked to Mike last week. Um, this is like kind of like a fun throwback, like veterans fight they've added on this card. You must have been pretty stoked to get Mike as an opponent. Yeah, very excited. I was um, anticipating the fight a little bit earlier. October 19th is, is when Sean... Um, Shelby told me I could fight. He's like, hey, the, the earliest we could play, she's October 19th. So I've been getting ready for that. That also coincided with my teammate, Anthony Hernandez, who fought Michelle Pajera, dogged him. Yeah. But um, so, I was, get, so I, I was getting ready for that, like like maybe a short notice thing on that. But then Sean said, hey, but Kiesa's not ready. And I wasn't even thinking about Kiesa. I'm like, okay, give me someone else, you know? And then next thing we knew... Michael Chiesa, UFC 310. Yes! And, and if I'm not mistaken, you got a new contract too, right? I saw something on Facebook or Instagram or something. Yeah, so that's got to feel good, man, because I, I, you, know, you and I have been doing interviews since, I think, before you got in the UFC, and I know it's, it was a long road to get there, and you've been, you've been a mainstay for I don't know how many years now. Like, I even remember when you quit your job just to do this full-time. Yeah. No, we've, it, this is eight, eight, nine years almost, man. It's a... Yeah. Uh, you know, I've been in here for a long time, and, and to, to get a vet like Michael um, on this card is amazing. Looks just like a striker versus grappler, but is it a little bit more deep than that? How are you looking at this fight? I think it, I mean, that's how it looks on the surface, but I can grapple. You know, I can grapple, and I've been grappling for a long time, and um, he is a grappler, right? So that that's where he wants to take it, and that's basically his only path to victory. So it's up to me if I want to, you know, play with them there or uh, beat them up top but wherever it goes i'm ready to to take care of business and win um training camp i know usually it's mma gold it's team alpha male anything different for this camp how you you sort of structured things going into the fight yeah it's a lot of mma gold a lot of team alpha male um a lot of mary nobles a lot of game fit, a lot of Elder Auto Hills Jiu Jitsu with Elliot. Um, doing good stuff. Yeah. Doing really good stuff. A lot of reps. Loader. Loader's been helping a lot. Nice. Um, Jim West. Um, yeah, we've been doing a lot of good stuff. A lot of specifics. A lot of specifics. So I'm so prepared for this. For everything, man. I, I'm looking forward to showing, especially in an arena. Yeah, especially at T-Mobile Arena, like last pay per view of the year, fans. I mean, the prelims. Do you see those prelims? Those prelims are crazy. You can I know they a, got Aljamain Sterling on oh, the prelims. Oh, fight card on those prelims. Yeah. yeah, you could do that whole card. Yeah, so, so 
Um, you, you mentioned him earlier, Anthony Hernandez. How cool is that to see him? Because I think those who know Anthony and know how good he is uh, felt, you know, like, like sort of knew the, the talent level, but to be able to put it on a main event and against a guy that a lot of people thought was this, you know, future champion and Michelle Pereira, like how cool is that for you? Because you, you obviously knew how good he was, but to see him put it on display and everyone else kind of getting up to speed, that must have been cool for you. Yeah, so proud too. It's like, like we know how good he is and we weren't surprised. Um, we were, I mean, we knew Michelle would be strong and be able to defend that stuff, but Fluff was just spamming those takedowns and um, wore him out. I mean, he wasn't even tired. Anthony wasn't even tired, man. That's a testament to how hard we work and what we do. I mean, we, me and Fluff grapple four days a week. Mm -hmm. You know, we see each other every day doing stuff. So I'm looking forward to working my game. Um, it's evolved. I've, I've been doing a lot since we talked to you in February um, against uh, Jeremiah Wells. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I've done stem cell since. That's been a success. Nice. And I just feel so good. I've never felt this good. And it's cliche because people say this is the best I've ever felt, but it really is. But isn't it also too like like again as you get older you learn more right so you know what works better for your body things that you're like maybe I shouldn't do that maybe I should do this right so I, I think that's part of it too like as someone who like I don't fight obviously but I mean there's things that I do now that I certainly did not do in my 20s and I wish I did because you know I'd probably be my day to day would be a little bit better right so I think you know for fighting like you said getting the stem cells all this stuff you're just feeling more optimal I think would probably be the best way right. Yeah, optimized. Body optimization, baby. Uh, I go to this place, Jizen, too. Shout out to Jizen. Um, body optimization destination. I'm there every Monday doing brain training and all kinds of futuristic technologies, recoveries, and um, let's go. Sounds cool. ready. Got to check that out. Um, your corner, I imagine Jim will be there. Who else is going to be in the cage with you? Jim West. Um, coach Joey Rodriguez, boxing coach, and then uh, Ryan Loader, okay. the ultimate fighter. That's right. Yeah, I know that was really cool to see because uh, I know a lot of a lot of people <laughs> yeah. wanted to see Ryan uh, get in there, and he went in there and got it done. Um, how's this one playing out? Again, this is a really interesting matchup. How do you see it going down on uh, December seventh? Um, uh, I'm I'm going to split my stuff. I'm the, um, I mean, obviously defend the takedown, um, but I'm gonna bust them up. I'm gonna make them not want to be in there. Um, and I'm gonna get the job done. Yeah. I mean, we might get taken down. I'll get up. <laughs> I'm going to get up yeah. and I'm gonna beat them up. And if I take it down again, I'm gonna beat them up again. And then, um, you know, I'm looking for a finish. Whether it's knockout, submission. Um, I mean, I could see both. I could see both. I could see me knocking him out standing, or I could see him trying to shoot and getting stuffed and getting choked, or I could see him on the ground getting ground pounded. Um, this is going to be my best performance today on the biggest stage right now. You mentioned it being a big card. Uh, we have a new co-main event. It's Shavcat. It's uh, Ian Gary. Uh, that's on your card, like I mentioned, five rounds. Who's taking that fight? Because that's a big one in your division. I got Shavcat, man. I don't like Ian Gary. I don't like him. I, well, so yeah, I, don't know I, I think that, he's that. done some things outside the cage that, that obviously people don't like. But but just look, <laughs> looking at Ian Gary, the fighter, do you think even Ian Gary, the fighter, will get it done? Or you think Shavcat still got his number? I think Shavcat still get his number. Um Chef Cat's good. I mean, he did look human in the Jeff Neal fight. Um, but, you know, um, I mean, Gary's been doing well, too. But the guys he's been fighting, I mean, I don't know. Just, <laughs> I mean, he did good. But if you look at the fights, how the fights went, like, like, um, I don't know, I'm not too impressed. Fair enough. Um, and then a guy you fought, Colby Covington, now fighting Joaquin Buckley in the main event at UFC Tampa. How do you see that one going down? <laughs> Buckley's good, man. Buckley's good. I want to. I want to run to a Buckley one of these days. He's good. Um, I mean, when's the last time Colby won? He's just been on a cold streak, man. Yeah, I think it was Masvidal, which was a couple of years ago. 
Yeah, I mean, if he get his wrestling game going, he just looked kind of weird in that last fight. Uh, against Leon, was that yeah. the fight? Yeah, that was the last fight almost a year ago. Yeah, he wasn't pressing. He wasn't even wrestling. So, if he could wrestle and be old Kobe, he can win. If he's fought, you know, kind of, kind of rigid and not not aggressive, then Buckley for sure. What do you think's more likely? Uh, mm. <laughs> I want to say Colby could get it to get back to his winning ways. Man. We had a bunch of stuff happen over the last couple of weeks. First and foremost, did you watch Jake Paul, Mike Tyson? And if so, what did you think? I did watch it. I was at a yoga retreat and I, I was, you know, and had the phone and um, I thought, I mean, it thought how it went, how I thought, I thought, I thought Mike, if he had any kind of chance, he'd have to take him out in the first round, second round, and then he'd just be so gassed that he wouldn't be able to do anything. And then I think after the second round, it showed, it showed, it showed Mike Tyson just standing there, just shot. <laughs> just after the round, I was like, he's gassed. All the way gassed. So I'm, I'm you know, Jake Paul won, cool. I'm glad that Mike Tyson didn't get hurt because I was worried about him getting some kind of injury or yeah. getting knocked out or some getting, you know, he's an old man, you know? So I was concerned about his safety, but the fact that he did not get hurt, um, I'm happy for him. I'm happy for they got the money. I'm happy he got some more exposure because I was upset that they kind of like preyed on him to, to fight for the money. You know what I mean? I wish someone would have paid him to not fight, but how the fight went, I'm happy. I'm happy with it. You know, he got paid. It was the biggest boxing event on Netflix. The first one made history. Um, I think it's good. I think it's good for the sport. And then that same weekend, we had John Jones and Stipe. Uh, what did you think of that fight? And do you think John fights again? I did like that fight. I mean, it was good to see Vintage Jones. I mean, he's big now. I might mean, say Vintage because he just doesn't fight much. But yeah, spinning back kick, lacerated the ribs, and I, I thought Stipe did pretty good. I didn't think he'd do that well. I thought um, he hung in there, man. He hung in there, didn't want to lose. But um, I think Jones will fight. I think he got the taste of it. I'm I'm interested in the Aspinall thing. Um, if he's, you know, he, I just saw a thing how he's back in negotiations with the fight, so. Hopefully he does. I, I I think he's gonna change his tune on the Aspinall things. You know, blaming, for instance, oh his attitude. I don't want to do business with him. Like, fuck. Sorry, f that. Like, mm -hmm. he needs to go handle that. There you go. By the way, you can swear in here. I don't mind. It's all good by me. Um, and okay. Last thing, I didn't... No, no, it's it's all good. And then last thing, just on three hundred nine, a lot of people criticizing Bo Nickel for his performance against Paul Craig. Did you watch the fight? And if so, what did you think of uh, his that win that he got? I didn't. I didn't see that fight. Um, I heard about it. Mm -hmm. Um, I I think I commented on it. Um, like it was boring or something. But what about the Michael Chandler fight? What oh, about that, that? Yeah. What about Mister Thirty? back of the head strikes what about that, that yeah it's too, so the ref dirty. should have called that and 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 i think that's something where they got to look at what chandler's doing too because that's you know he's, he's cheating straight up cheating and i didn't see i saw like the fifth round of the fight like kind of through the phone and then i watched a video yesterday on twitter and showed like every hit that chandler cheated on that fight all the grabs and all the stuff like my god what a freaking cheater. I've it looked like the most I fought this Russian guy Zeline who cheated a lot. But. Oh, I remember the whole story about even you guys almost fought before the fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Holding the cage, double underhook on the cage. Like, come on. But for Chandler, so many in the back of the head, and then he's getting all pissed about it. Like, watch the video. All over on the ear. But your whole forearm was just blast in the back of his head. The fence grabs, numerous holding the top. Come on. Yeah. Even Dana's pissed. Yeah. It was, was a bad look for sure. And uh, we'll see uh, what's next for him. I don't know. That's uh, another uh, tough loss. Uh, Max, really appreciate the time, man. It's UFC 310 coming up here December 7th. Uh, anyone you want to thank before we get out of here? Any sponsors? Any social media you want to mention? I'll give you the last word. Yes. Um, I have my list. All good. 
<laughs> I'm prepared. I love it. Uh, shout out to my sponsors. I appreciate you guys for the journey. We're out here. Shout out to Jizen, Sailor Performance Institute, Plus Gardens, KC Home Services, Savant Solutions, HSB Solutions, Endless Possibilities, Cap City Honda, and Gold Standard Heating and Air. Everyone else I appreciate, my gyms, my teammates, my coaches, my fans. We have fight merch up. They're getting printed today, maxpainstore.com. Tap in on Instagram, Max Payne Griffin. Same on Twitter, same on everything else. Much love. I appreciate you guys. Watch um, the Max Payne Army in full effect. The pain train is coming. UF3310. Let's go. Mm -mm.